Okay, so the recording started. Welcome to Make the Cut and Pop-Up Card Studio question and answer webinar. Tonight is October 21st, 2014. Thank you for joining us. Thank you also to Susan and Julie who are helping tonight, and both of them will probably get uh, in some demonstration time. Um, I've already gone through the ground rules, and uh, I just want to continue on to say that we each week I, I open a thread on the forum uh, similar to this so that people can ask their questions ahead of time, and that's where we'll start with the questions. <clears throat> so um, Julie's actually going to take the first question, but before she does, I'm going to ask or try to answer Jerry's question here. So this is specific to the K&K Zing. She's having trouble with the uh, one of the levers and then has now lost, I believe, the spring. So um, the only thing I would say is you can contact uh, K&K USA and work with them. Um, there is a contact page, I believe, oops, USA, if I could spell. Um, port, maybe. We'll see if that's it. No. So go to their main page. Um, but contact them either through through the um, you know their support ticket system or um, by phone, and they'll work you out. So here's a contact page. Here's their phone number. Um, I believe their hours are like 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday, East Coast time in the U.S., um, and just explain what happened. And um, I'm sure they have spare parts there that they can sell, so just chat with them on that. Other than that, I think that was your main question there, Jamie, or Carrie, Jerry, sorry. You have to excuse me. I, I have, I'm in the hotel, and I'm using the, uh, the big screen TV, which is further away from my eyes than normal. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So um, just just check with them. That's the best place to work with, and uh, I'm sure they'll be able to help you out. So the first question had to do from it's uh, from Adele with asking how to do a box, you know, that's not square or round or whatever, uh, in the shape of a bowling pin in this case. So I'm going to turn this over to Jewel. Let's see, can, sorry, hang a minute. Can we see the questions plus who is attending? Don't we have that? You can see who's attending. I Go ahead, I'm I sorry. I think I've put it up. Okay. I clicked on the buttons. I think they're there now. Okay. Um, maybe on my laptop it doesn't default to that. On my uh, At home it always defaults onto that, so I never have to worry about it anymore. Um, okay, sorry about that. <clears throat> Yeah, she says thanks. Okay, so let me um, let me go ahead and switch over to Julie if I can find the cursor here. Uh, Julie, you're ready, right? I'm ready. Okay. I guess I should have asked that first. Okay, and I'll let you know when we see your screen, and we see your screen. It looks like so. I'm gonna go on mute. Okay. Well, the first thing I want to do if I want to make a a box is to kind of get the general shape of a box and I usually just will go to Google and type in uh, let's see we'll do a bowling pin images get a good picture of a bowling pin so know what I'm trying to emulate here and oh well, this one will do so I double click on it and you could visit the page to get a bigger image. So I'm going to right click on this and copy image and then go back to make the cut and click on the pixel trace button which is the center button at the top one that has these curved boxes and then click on paste. Now I want a solid image so I'm just going to first click black out and apply changes so that I get the basic outline of the shape and click import but I still want to get the red pieces so I'm going to continue tracing and click on color click on the color box here click on the red and I don't want to black out here so apply changes so that gives me an idea where the 
the red is going to be, and I click on Import and Finish Tracing. Now this bottom piece I want to send to its own layer and make it white. And I'll move it down below the red so we can see the red. So this is a, we have an idea of a bowling pin shape. Well, this rounded bottom, we could keep it rounded or we could keep the bottom flat. I think the picture that she had had a, a flat bottom. Um, so if I want a flat bottom, I would just take my knife here and cut off the bottom. I mean, I could just get rid of this bottom piece and um, click on the pen, left click and right click to, I think Brian told me to do this different, left click and left click till it's closed. No, it didn't work, Brian. <laughs> uh, we'll try it again. Left click on the green dot or right click on the green dot. So now I have a kind of a square bottom. Now if this were a box, I think this box would be rather narrow. So like in the picture that she showed, I would like to make it a little wider. Um, you can make it whatever size you want. I think I would like to keep mine six inches tall. So I'm going to type in six here and maybe make it two and a half inches wide just to keep it even. And then these red things really are not going to be, I'm not going to use them any more than just for placement guidelines because I'll want on my box lid, I want the red to go around the side and across the top and down the side and I may want the red on the bottom as well. So I'm going to need two of these. This will be the top of the box. And so if I select everything and hold Control and Shift, I can drag to get another one. And I'll just send these red pieces to their, they're already on their own layer, and get rid of the extra layers here. Now the next thing that I need to do is create the sides. So you can determine how tall you want your box to be. I've got these two and a half inches across, so if we kind of wanted it to simulate a round bowling pin, um, we would maybe want it, want the box to be two and a half inches deep, or maybe three inches, and then maybe I would make the lid about an inch and a half deep. We can, you can really choose whatever you want. So I'm going to move these down and work on the lids. In order to know how long to make the sides, we need to measure the perimeter. And so when we get this measuring tool and hover over the line at the top of the screen, you'll see perimeter is listed as 14, 0.4258 inches. Well, since I only have a 12 inch mat, I will probably divide my piece into two parts. So I'm going to divide that into half, which gives me 7.2128. My math's right. And um, so I want to make two pieces, two boxes, so I'm going to go up here to basic shapes and type in SQ for square, double click that to add it to my mat. And I'm going to send that to its own layer by clicking the smaller of the two green plus icons. So we'll start with the bottom of the box first and let's say we'll want it three inches high and then we want it to be seven point three eight one five inches wide and press enter. So this is half of the box. 
then we're going to do two of these. Half will go around half of the, the box, so we'll make two of them and glue them together. So I also at the top of the box like to have an extra half inch to serve as um, kind of a lip to fold over. You could just have it straight, but by folding over an extra half inch or so, you get a stronger edge around the top. So um, I think I'll make this three and a half inches high. And then we need, so we have a half inch to fold over here. Then we need to have some tabs to glue to this shape, to glue the bottom edge to the shape. So um, I just use a trapezoid from Basic Shapes to get that. So I type TR and there's a trapezoid. We can use a trapezoid for a couple things. We can rotate it and get the side tab over here. If I drag this down to the line here, I can see where the half inch mark would be or the edge. And doesn't matter really how wide that is or how the angle is. But you can just stretch it out and then you can change the angle by clicking on it to get the plus. I don't know if that's going to work too well. I think I'll, I'll just um, undo that. And I think I'll just use this at the, the um, bottom for the um, for the little glue tabs. Now since we're going around a curves, I don't want it this wide. I'll probably make it about half inch to three quarters of an inch long so that it'll have enough uh, room to grab the, uh, the, the base. And so this We'll go across and we could duplicate this in order to get enough here to fit the whole side. So I can go to Edit, Duplicate, and I don't want any spaces in between these, so I'll put zero for spacing and increase the columns by clicking on the up arrow until I have enough to cover this side. Now I could um, make it a little less than what I actually need and click on apply and I'm going to hold the control key and drag this arrow so it'll space everything evenly all the way to the edge. So that gives me the tabs to fold under. So I can uh, weld those together. I think they'll weld but before I do I'm going to type 4 and 3 to see how close I am to the edge. If I arrow down, you see there's white, and I want the black to go just barely over the edge there. I think that'll work. And then I also want to, I'll just draw the edge, the tab for the side. So left click, left click, left click left click and right click or left click whatever um, convert to a line and I don't really have to even have this edge because it's going to disappear but left click and right click and join node to the closest node gives me a shape here that I can just kind of overlap here with the edge of the 
design. So then we're going to have a score line at the top and a score line down here and a score line here. So instead of drawing in a score line, I like to just add a new layer and add another square, SQ, double click. And with this one, I'm going to resize it the same size as the original box would have been which would be three inches, no, three inches high and the width of 7.3815, enter. Seven point three eight one five and three inches high, enter. And then it'll it'll be sitting over this. I'll I'll click on each one and line it up with the left by typing L. Julie? Yes. Do you wanna do you wanna take off your contrast because it's just black on black and people are finding it hard? Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna just position this so that um, actually, I haven't welded the other, so with both of these collected, I'll type B to align them at the bottom and L to align them to the left. And then I'll change these lines, line style to dash, so I know that these are the score lines. And then I'm going to remove the edge. I'll hide this one. I'm going to click on this side because I don't need a score line there. And I'm going to hit delete to get rid of that one. So now I have a nice straight score lines. I'm not very good at drawing straight lines. And when I need them to be straight, I can get them with a good square or rectangle. Julie? Yes. Julie, you don't need a score line at the other side on the, on the right-hand side because it'll bend when you're trying to t turn it. That one. It'll bend when I'm trying to turn it, yes. When, you, when you're trying to turn. shape it around, it'll bend yes. instead of shaping. That's true. Um, and we, uh, since this is going to be going all the way around as one solid piece, we really don't want it to bend. So we'll keep it straight. So I'll get rid of that line too. And so now I have my boxes. I'm going to hide my score line. And I'm going to um, just select it all and click on Weld. So Weld Julie, all my pieces. Yes. Before you do, do you want to take a copy of the whole lot and make a tab, a tab as big as your bottom flat bit to put on just one side of it? Do you understand what I mean? Take a tab. No. Take a copy of the whole lot before you welded it with the score lines. With the score lines as well. Put that put that to the side. Okay. Now you can now you can weld one of them, and I'll tell you what to do to the other. Okay. Now this one, I'm going to have two anyway because two. It's going to take two glued together to go around the whole side, and then I'm going to change the sizing of it um, in order to make the lid. So I'm going to take all of this, and I'm going to drag it down here. But I'm going to make this shorter, the height of my lid. And I'll make that maybe two inches, one and a half inches, plus a fold under. So now I have a part for the lids and that will glue together here. And I'll have the part for the box that will glue together here.
So when I hide these... Now, Julie? Yes. Now, Julie, if you measure the bottom part of your bowling pin and make one of those tabs as wide as the bowling pin, the bottom part of your bowling pin, do you, do you know what I mean? The, the width across from here to here. Yes. So that I know where the, the fold is. Yes. Well, there's a couple ways to measure that. I could break it, but I think what I'll do is just get a square to measure it. I zoom in on that square, four and a three, then I'll make it just as wide as that pin is on the bottom. So now I can see that the width is 1.1979. One So okay, now so you replace some of those tabs as the one, as the So I want to make sure I have a fold line that is maybe halfway if I want the fold line to be in the center of the bottom. I don't know how you would do it. Would you make the seam at the edge? I was thinking I'd make a seam here. I would make one here. seam at the edge. I was going to make one seam at the middle of the bottom and one seam at the middle of the top. Uh, just because it's symmetrical, but I don't think it really matters. So if I wanted to have a fold line, let's say, and to have the seam at the edge of the bottom, then one of these tabs, I would want to have it so that, that it's not, the tab's not in the middle of it. So if that were the case, then I'd move this over to here and add a few more. Is that what you mean? Then I would duplicate a little bit more. Making the last square, where at last tab, as wide as your square. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, that makes sense. Okay, like that? Yep, like that. Okay. And then the other, the other one just has all the little ones on it. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. So then um, that's the lid. And if I, I'm going to zoom back out. And since I've got that one figured out, then I can, I can make this one be my, um, I'll delete these, make a copy of these by holding control shift and just drag, and I'll make these taller, as tall as I want them to be, which I think I said was three and a half. That's one, two, three, and a half. 
it doesn't really matter. And the other thing I was just thinking of is that these lid, the lid needs to be slightly longer, slightly larger than the bottom, right? Otherwise it won't fit. That's correct. So I, I'm going to make this the lid and I'm going to give it a, a, a shadow width of, let's say, 0 0.05 and accept that so that the lid's just slightly bigger than the original. And that means that my, my box needs to be longer. And to find the length again, I would measure that. And this gives me 14.74 uh, for the total, which would be, I'll get my calculator. Divided by 2 would give me 7.359. So I'm going to make this one at least this part of it the width of 7.539 and enter. And I'll do this one also the length of seven point five three nine. Then we can add that tab back on. I'll zoom in a little bit. Julie, sorry mm -hmm. that first one went smaller for some reason. I know, I don't know why. 7.5. Hey, now don't we all wish we had Susan in our backyard every day? To, I mean, it, no, not in our backyard, right in our craft room to talk us through all these. Okay. So now we have two pieces for the lid that are bigger, and this one would be the lid, and this one would be the, the um, bottom of the box. So we have all these pieces. I'm going to hide the score lines and would be helpful if I really did this a little more accurately, I think. Did I make this the right height? This one really should be 3.5. If we know the height, then we'll know how, how long to make the stripes. So I want to make this one 3.5. with a little leeway. Okay, so now I can select these with the score lines hidden and do the weld. And we weld here so we have them all one piece. And the same for the lid. Okay, so now we have all those pieces. 
And we have the score lines. Everything's ready to fold. So the only thing that we need now is to make the stripes. And I'd like the stripes, once I've got the, the box put together, if you want the stripes to go all the way around the box and you want it to go around the, the um, lid and fold under maybe with, you know, an extra, maybe an extra inch. What we need is the measurement across here. And um, these are kind of crooked little pieces. So what I want to do is add a layer for the stripes and go to the basic shapes again and double click to get a square. There it is. Julie, mm -hmm. I'm sorry for being a pain. That's all right. You can be a pain on Julie, you if you want that to wrap around, it's not going to wrap around because you're going on an angle. So when you fold it, it's going to go screw with off. That's why the actual box doesn't have the stripe going sideways, like down oh. the side. Because mm -hmm. when, you, when you fold it on the angle of the bowling pin, it's going to be on an angle, so the stripe is going to go completely <laughs> in a wrong direction. It's going to be skewed. Yes. So we can, what we can do for that is um, make the top the exact shape. So I'm going to make another copy of the top by clicking and selecting Control and Shift and drag. And I want to keep it at the same level so I can know where these are supposed to go. And I'm going to make a stripe approximately the same width as the stripes that we have here just by laying it over there. And then I'm going to um, hold control in my arrow key to move this stripe over here. But I want the stripe to be bigger than the bowling pin. And I want another one to be down here that's bigger. And kind of lining up with this stripe here. And I'm going to select both of those and join them. And then with those joined, I'm going to hold Shift and select the pin and go to Boolean Join and do a B minus A. No, what do I want? Intersect? Yeah intersect and apply and this way oops I'm gonna I'm gonna hide this and I'm gonna move these over so I know exactly where they're supposed to be and they'll be the exact size so then I can glue it right to the top so that before I put my tabs on these will be a perfect fit and I'll make them red so I know what those are. And uh, if you wanted to have, if you wanted to have these for the bottom of the box, they'll be a little, little big. But if we do an inset shadow, we may get it right. Not sure. I'll do a a, a minus. 0.05. Well, it looks pretty good. It's not quite as wide as these, though. So I'm going to uh, split these apart. And I know Susan would do this a better way, but I can just make it as long as that is. Or I just could have done the same process we just did here to get them perfect. And really, if I were making this 
I want it to be perfect. So I would get this, duplicate it, and make me a, another one of these. Let me get in trouble by not organizing them at the right height, but I can see these lines as they go over. Make sure this pin is at the same height as this pin by typing H. Making sure these are at the same height by typing H. Now selecting these, holding the shift and selecting this and again Boolean join and we'll do um, intersect apply and now I have perfect size stripes for the bottom. Oops, undo. I want to make sure that these are all the same height so I'll type H. So now we have the bottom with stripes and the top with stripes and if you want the stripes on the side It's going to be a little bendy too, but um, this will give you the basic stripes there. Now, I was just going to put straight stripes on for the edge, but it would have to be this same angle flipped. So I think I'll let Susan show you how to do the stripes if you want them on the side of the box. So what we have here now is we have a top and a bottom, stripes for the top and the bottom. We have a box that you would take this edge and you would glue to here like this, and then you'd glue this around to this side. And this here would be glued to the bottom. This would be glued to the top, you'd fold under this and glue it down, fold this under and glue it down. And um, you, if you want to have, I would like to have another piece inside to kind of hide these glue tabs. So I'd probably make another one of these slightly smaller. So if I select both of these and drag a copy, I might like to um, do an inset shadow again, a minus 0.5 of each, and then keep the insides and get rid of the outside so that this would be a little smaller to glue on the inside of each of these to cover up the tabs. So then I'm not sure why this one is not dark. Let's go to contrast. I made it white, that's why. So these, I want to make them white. We'll move the red up to the top and get rid of the empty layers and these will be white as well. Now when you're cutting these you might want to make these a different color I think um, just to differentiate them from the outside you know these are the when you cut them you can cut them white but I might get confused if I don't label them. These are going to be the liners. 